opinions. Thanks for watching. The Experience Share is an item that's been a part of Pokemon since the very first games, but like everything in this franchise, it has evolved and changed. I'm going to be honest, the way the Experience Share works throughout the different generations can get kind of complicated, so I'm going to keep it simple. In Generation 1, it was called the EXP All, and if it was in your bag, it halved the experience earned by the Pokemon that participated in the battle and shared the rest among your party members equally. In Generation 2, we got the EXP Share, which is now a held item. Typically, you can only get one EXP share per save file, so this meant you could only share your experience with one other Pokemon. The experience share stayed as a held item until Generation 6. In Generation 6, the experience share turned into a key item, which shared the experience with your entire team. You could turn it off if you decided you only wanted to train one Pokemon, however. Generation 7 also had this experience share. Then, Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee decided to remove the experience share altogether, and it's now just an effect present throughout the entire game. The effect cannot be turned off. At the time, it seemed most people didn't mind though, because this was the children's game. Then it was announced Pokemon Sword and Shield would also have this sort of experience share, and everyone lost their minds. And I kind of understand why. People are fed up of Game Freak taking away features. But that's a topic for another day. The thing that bothers me about this is that people seem to think that using the EXP share makes the games easy. It doesn't. Or rather, it shouldn't. The EXP share is simply convenience. Inconvenience shouldn't be used to make a game harder, in my opinion. I've been preaching this for a while, but Pokemon has never really been a hard game. Once you learn your type matchups, it becomes much easier. It becomes even easier once you learn what every attack and ability does, and in cases like mine when you learn what most Pokemon's general stat distributions are... Should I zippy zap? I think Lapras has got better special bulk than physical, so I'm gonna assume. The only chance of severely struggling in a Pokemon game is by adding the challenge yourself. I think people misplace their idea of Pokemon getting easier. They believe it's the EXP share's fault, or that Pokemon are just dumbing things down. Besides us obviously becoming better at Pokemon throughout the years, adding to that sense of easiness in later games, I think the last few games have just had poor level scaling around the new EXP system. It's a hard thing to balance. Do you balance the game around the player that likes to battle every trainer? The player that likes to skip every trainer? The player that likes to solo run with one Pokemon? The player that likes to play with a full team of six? The player that likes to play with more than six Pokemon? The player that loves grinding? The player that hates grinding? Do you see what I mean? There's far too many playstyles to take into account when it comes to Pokemon. And that's part of the reason why many of us love this series so much. There's really no right or wrong way to play. Jinichi Masuda has admitted that they've been trying to make the games more accessible to children. This is because kids nowadays don't have the attention span they used to, and they're absolutely right. When I was a kid, I had the choice of a couple of games to play or watch what was on TV. So if I found myself struggling, I just had to suck it up and keep trying. Nowadays, there's no need to do that. There's so many games now you can get for free at the click of a button, or if you're bored, there's YouTube and Netflix. I don't think it's fair to compare how you were as a kid versus kids nowadays. Kids aren't stupid, of course they can figure out Pokemon if they want to. But if they get bored, they have plenty of substitutes that we never had. Technology has come a long way. I firmly believe you cannot blame Game Freak for choosing to make their games more accessible to the casual player. Especially when they've seen the community be more than okay with adding their own difficulty to their playthroughs with Nuzlocks. I held a poll on my main YouTube channel asking which experience share people preferred. It received 12,000 votes. The Generation 1 EXP share received 2% of the votes. I think most people didn't even know the Generation 1 had an experience share. 24% of people said they preferred when the experience share was a held item from Generation 2 to 5. From what I can gather from the comments, leveling Pokemon is just more personal back then and it made using the experience share feel strategic. These games are where most challenge runs are held because it's not possible to easily overlevel yourself if you're playing with a self-imposed level cap. To my surprise, 59% of people said they liked the Generation 6 to 7 one most. This is because Generation 6 to 7 is more user friendly. It saves a lot of time grinding while still giving you the option to turn it off when you only want to focus on leveling a particular Pokemon. It's literally the best of both worlds. And anyone that said they personally enjoyed Generation 8's experience share agreed the option to turn it off shouldn't have been removed, even if they personally would never use it. 
My opinion on the experience share debate is the generation two to five one wasn't as fun. You have to throw an experience share on a Pokemon for a couple of hours just so it can compete with your other team members. It made adding a new Pokemon to your team a chore and I felt I was just using my higher level Pokemon, typically my starter, most of the game. From personal experience, turning off the generation six to seven experience share led to being severely under leveled, which just turned the game into spamming healing items, which isn't fun by the way. The games just weren't balanced around having it off, and in the case of X and Y and Oras, they weren't really balanced around having it on either. Unless you know what you're coming up against from previous experience with these games, constantly turning the experience share on and off just to get your levels right isn't a solution. The games were just poorly balanced, plain and simple. However, I think Pokemon Sword and Shield was one of the best balanced Pokemon games since Black and White 2. A lot of wild Pokemon were close to the level of my Pokemon, so I could add them to my team and use them right away. When I'm playing through a new Pokemon game, the highlight for me is using as many new Pokemon as possible. So this was a welcomed addition because I didn't have to not use them for a couple hours while they caught up in level. I battled most trainers, which were never that far behind me in level. I didn't use much EXP candy, and I didn't do much grinding against wild Pokemon. I kinda just played the game how most casual fans would, and by the end of it, I was 9 to 10 levels lower than Leon. I still didn't struggle much, of course, but that's because I had revives and hyper potions on my side. My point is, I believe they found a nice way to balance Pokemon games, and having the ability to turn off the experience share would ruin their work towards that. It's a weak argument against the option to turn it off, but it's all I got. So, what's the answer? How can Game Freak make their games more difficult? I think they're already doing it. I think Pokemon Legends Arceus is the solution to older fans complaining that Game Freak doesn't care about them anymore. The Game Freak bad, they make games too easy for me crowd. Those that seek difficulty in their games will be appeased. At least that's my theory. The game isn't out yet. But for those that specifically enjoy the traditional Pokemon format and want their games to be harder, what are some solutions Game Freak could take on board? Well, firstly, and most obviously, there's adding the option to turn off the experience share again. While I personally don't think I'd ever use this feature, and I don't think inconveniencing yourself should be a form of difficulty, in a casual playthrough at least, it's clear a lot of people do. Many people in my comments said older games felt more challenging because of the fact they had to individually train Pokemon. And if that's the sort of challenge you want in your games, who am I to argue against that? Having the choice to turn off the experience share is objectively better than no choice at all. Especially because we've had it before. Secondly, there's the idea of a hard mode. They did this once with Pokemon Black and White too. I've never heard of it was any good though. I think the issue is, with a hard mode, people will complain that it's not hard enough, or that it's too hard. By adding a hard mode, they're opening up a can of worms I don't think they care to open. Like I said earlier, the community has shown that they are more than okay with adding self-imposed challenges to make Pokemon a more difficult experience. I don't think Pokemon has ever been about being difficult, but it's clear some fans crave that. Thirdly, there's the level scaling. Some ROM hacks I've played like Pokemon Radical Red and Pokemon Unbound have made it so your levels scale to be around just the same as your opponents, but in two different ways. Radical Red has it so you can't gain experience after you reach a certain level. The cap is raised each time you obtain a new gym badge. If you somehow go past this level cap, your Pokemon disobey your orders. Pokemon Unbound has it so the opponent's levels just match yours. If you're level 50 by the first gym, the first gym leader will also be level 50. I don't think either of these are realistic. While they're fun to play with, I don't want to see them introduced in a mainline Pokemon game. Unless it's the DLC. Isle of Armor and Crown Tundra definitely should have had level scaling. But besides DLC, what's the point of gaining experience at all if I'm capped or if my opponent stays on par with me? It wouldn't feel like I'd be making any real progress as a trainer in this magical world of Pokemon. I feel it would ruin the immersion. And hey, there's definitely some players out there that love being overleveled and ruining everyone in their path. At the end of the day, we all have our opinions on what makes the best Pokemon experience, and they're all valid. I truly believe there's no right or wrong answer to this. I just wish people could see how dawning of a task balancing a game like Pokemon must be, when you have all these different variables but you want to keep things simple. Adding a bunch of options just muddies things, and I think part of Pokemon's success as an RPG is from that simplicity. People like to remind you that this is the top grossing media franchise and they should be doing better. I won't disagree that they could do better, but sometimes people forget the reason this franchise is so amazing is the ability to play however we like.